In recent years, data, robotics, AI, chips, and other high-tech industries have become the most competitive battlefield amongst the world's countries, and China is no exception. Because of their own lack of local talents, Beijing used its greatest asset, money, to acquire many of the world's leading technology industries. Today, we will look at their methods and ultimate goals in doing so. First of all, there are still people who think that the cameras in the iPhone, Samsung, and other smartphones are designed and manufactured in Japan or Korea. This is not true anymore. The world's two largest camera module companies are China's Sunny Optical and O-Film Group. What about the famous Sony of Japan? In 2016, Sony shipped around 140 million lenses and produced a revenue of 1.5 billion USD. Later, the factory of Sony's original equipment manufacturer, the South China plant, was acquired by O-Film in November 2016, squeezing Sony out of its production in China. Meanwhile, its local Kwamamoto factory in Japan has not been doing mass production due to cost and other concerns, so Sony basically quit the camera module market since then. In the field of optics, Japan still has its advantage for image sensors. At the time, Sony, Samsung, and OmniVision Technologies are the three giants in terms of image sensors, especially Sony, who occupies a dominant position. As Sony made its rise in the field of image sensors, others are bound to fall, and that was OmniVision, who had the largest market share in 2011. After being surpassed by Sony, OmniVision's market share fell to about 16% in 2015 and ranked second in the world. By now, OmniVision's global market share is less than 10% and has been surpassed by Samsung in 2016. In April 2015, China's CITIC Capital Holdings LTD acquired OmniVision Technologies when OmniVision was experiencing a downturn. According to public information, the total acquisition cost was around 1.9 billion USD. After the transaction was completed, OmniVision was delisted from the Nasdaq stock market. In this way, Beijing was able to buy an image sensor technology company that it had never owned before. However, after Beijing bought OmniVision, its performance became worse and worse, and its market share became smaller and smaller. Closely related to image processing technology is the chip. With the rapid advancement of computer technology in the last decade, chips have become a battleground for international capital, as all electronic devices require chips. So much so that chips are now considered by all countries to be a technology of national security. The first world-class chip company acquired by Chinese capital is Imagination Technologies, a British company that has been supplying GPU products to Apple. However, in March 2017, Apple suddenly announced that it would develop its own GPU, and Imagination's share price plunged 70% overnight. Three months later in June 2017, Imagination's board of directors announced that the company would be open for acquisition by any possible buyers. Imagination, along with Qualcomm, were the giants in the mobile GPU market. In September 2017, Imagination finished its acquisition by Canyon Bridge, a private equity fund from China, for £550 million, at a premium of approximately 42%. You may remember that Canyon Bridge has appeared on US news in the past. In mid-September 2017, President Trump called off a plant acquisition of U.S. PLD manufacturer Lattice Semiconductors by Canyon Bridge, which would have accelerated China's access to field programmable gate array technology, a specialty chip with software functionality that can be programmed, with application to a wide array of national security platforms. What these two acquisitions have in common is that the chip companies acquired by China are among the top three design companies in the world in terms of technology and scale in the industry. This has allowed China to surge ahead in a field that it has never been involved in before, saving decades of time and cost. What's more is that China has gained the power to interfere with other mergers. The 35-year veteran of the semiconductor industry, Terry Daly, who was the former vice president of Global Foundries, wrote in June in an article that China can and has interfered with U.S. corporate mergers and acquisitions and consolidation strategies as in the 2018 Qualcomm slash NXP deal, and most recently with Applied Materials' proposed acquisition of Japan's Kokusai in the equipment sector. As most semiconductor multinationals have business operations in China, mainland regulators can block deals or alternately extract concessions. 
Two impending moves in the semiconductor industry include AMD's proposed acquisition of Z Links and NVIDIA's bid for ARM. In July of this year, Nexperia, a Dutch chip firm under Chinese semiconductor company Wingtech, confirmed that it would acquire Newport Wafer Fab, or NWF, the UK's largest chip maker, raising a lot of concerns in the UK. On July 13th, the British government, which had said it was inappropriate to intervene, changed its stance amid public opposition, with Prime Minister Boris Johnson saying that his national security adviser, Sir Stephen Lovegrove, would launch an investigation into the £63 million acquisition. The acquisition started when Nexperia signed a support contract with NWF in 2019, using its factory as collateral. The Telegraph reported that the Chinese company was able to take full control of the factory because the British company failed to meet its manufacturing quota obligations under the contract. In fact, before the acquisition, NWF had appealed to the British government to help find a source of funding to stop the acquisition, but the British government did not intervene. NWF is well versed in automotive, so this acquisition coincides with Beijing's national strategy to develop electric vehicles as announced in 2019. The use of debt trap to achieve acquisitions is also common in countries targeted by the CCP's Belt and Road Initiative. For example, China will support infrastructure projects in foreign countries, but when they fail to repay the debt, their assets are seized by Chinese firms. In addition to popular chip industries, military technology is directly related to a country's security. Here we will introduce a Chinese company called Aviation Industry Corporation of China, or AVEC a wholly state-owned military enterprise that makes most of China's fighter and transport planes. We'll first quickly explain what exactly is a state-owned enterprise in China. Since the Communist Party came into rule in 1949, state-owned enterprises are directly under the party's central government and are led by party members, so they are also considered party property, which is different from state-owned enterprises in other countries. Chinese state-owned enterprises dominated China's share of overseas acquisitions until 2015, and in the face of backlash in some countries, the power of acquisition has shifted from state-owned to private companies in recent years. But these private enterprises, such as Huawei, are also mostly controlled by party members, in order to acquire key technologies abroad. The AVIC Group completed 14 overseas acquisitions during the CCP's 12th five-year plan from 2011 to 2015 which totaled 2.3 billion USD. The targets of these acquisitions include Future Advanced Composite Components, or FAC, of Austria, Cirrus Logic, Continental Aerospace Technologies, and Nextier Automotive Group of the United States, and Technify Motors of Germany. Amongst these, FAC is a 20-year composites designer and manufacturer with important customers such as Airbus, Boeing, and Bombardier. After the acquisition by AVEC, FAC became the main parts supplier for the ARJ-21, China's first domestic passenger aircraft, providing critical technologies and materials that China lacks. Overseas acquisitions have led to a surge in revenue for AVEC, which rose from 43.1 billion RMB in 2011 to 75.3 billion RMB in 2015, an increase of nearly 75%. During the CCP's 13th five-year plan, AVEC said in its proposal to continue targeting developed countries for more technologies. Currently, AVEC not only has joint ventures in China with Boeing and Airbus, in which AVEC holds the largest stake, but also owns more than 20 listed companies, three of which are listed in Hong Kong. China has also spared no effort in the acquisition of global energy resources. China has a large stake in Portugal's oil and gas and electricity networks, as well as in half of Belgium's natural gas and electricity networks. The most typical example is China's control of the Australian power grid. As a state-owned enterprise, State Grid Corporation of China acquired a 41.11% stake in the South Australian transmission company Electranet in December 2012. Then in May 2013, it acquired a 60% stake in Jamina and a 19.1% stake in Australia's new energy network. In January 2014, China State Grid acquired a 60% stake in International Australian Assets, a subsidiary of Temasek Group Energy in Singapore, and a 19.9% stake in Ausnet Services, for a total project investment of approximately 3 billion USD. The Australian government didn't step in until 2016, when China's State Grid 
and Hong Kong's CK Infrastructure Holdings were attempting to buy a 50.4% controlling stake in Ausgrid, which is the electricity distribution network of New South Wales. In addition to Australia, State Grid China owns 14 to 100% stakes of electricity grid companies in Italy, Portugal, Greece, Belgium, the Philippines, Singapore, Chile, Brazil, and more countries around the world. Now let's talk about the pharmaceutical industry, which plays a significant role especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. China developed its pharmaceutical industry very late, while its neighbor India has already become the world's largest pharmaceutical country in the 2000s. In order to succeed in such a field, China again sought of acquisition. Founded in 1978 and headquartered in Hyderabad, India, Glan Pharma was the first Indian company to receive the United States FDA approval for the manufacture of injectable drugs in the U.S. and has received GMP certification in major regulatory markets around the world, with its business revenues coming mainly from the U.S. and Europe. In September 2017, CCP-backed Folsom Pharmaceuticals acquired an approximate 74% stake in Glan Pharma, giving Folsom access to the U.S. and European markets. During the COVID-19 pandemic, Folsom has also launched a vaccine that it claims is self-developed. Now let's take a look at the last example, KUKA Robotics of Germany. Founded in 1898 and listed on the Frankfurt Stock Exchange in 1980, KUKA is a leading global supplier of robots and automated production equipment and solutions. According to the International Federation of Robotics in 2015, KUKA's robotics market share in automotive manufacturing is the largest in the world. In August 2016, China's Maidea Group acquired a 94.55% stake in KUKA Robotics for 3.707 billion euros. So theoretically, the world's largest robotics manufacturer for automotive manufacturing now belongs to China. Although KUKA still claims to operate independently, in 2018, Maidea terminated then-CEO Till Reuters' contract early because Maidea wanted to be more involved in KUKA's management and operations. Till Reuters said in an interview that he was very disappointed with the pressure from the majority shareholder, and although he wished to remain the CEO of KUKA, Maidea Group has direct control of the company. The acquisition of a majority stake in KUKA by Maidea is not just a financial investment, as Maidea is an appliance manufacturer with its main market in China. The acquisition follows the Chinese government's strategic plan to gain technologies in order to develop China's robotic industry. In fact, there are many other cases of foreign acquisitions by China in order to get their technology, reputation, and market share. The above mentioned are just a few of the most notable ones. Xi Jinping became the leader of the Communist Party in 2013 and introduced the concept of community with shared future for mankind. In fact, the Chinese name of this ideology is more accurate to what it actually means, that is, a commonwealth of human destiny. In a special report on him by the Xinhua News Agency, the concept was explained as having me inside you and having you inside me, and it can be interpreted as eliminating the boundaries between countries and states in terms of wealth and technologies. The acquisition of overseas companies was also set as a strategic goal and written into the agenda of the 12th and 13th CPC National Congress. China's overseas acquisition spree came just a few years after 2013 and peaked in 2015. However, China has never relaxed its own restrictions on investment from other countries, and any foreign investment entering China can only operate in China on a joint venture basis with a maximum of 49% stakes. In other words, the Chinese side of the joint venture always remains the majority stakeholder and have the ultimate deciding power.